Hi, I'm Tirsa, and today Dan and I are going to walk you through how to build your own hydroponic system. Everybody, my name is Daniel Clark, and I'm going to show you how to build your own hydroponic system. Dico, what do you have to say about hydroponics? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, really? So Dan's gone ahead and given a step-by-step -step guide of all the materials you'll need, and I'll show you how we incorporate those materials into our school hydroponic systems. Let's make a hydroponic garden. We're just gonna start with uh, all the components that you need to build your system. Uh, we're gonna use the deep water hydroponic system as that's the same one that we use in our food computer that's taught in schools through AZSA. Uh, it's also one of the most simple hydroponic systems and something you can set up in your own home pretty easily. I, uh, I recommend the darkest bucket possible. You can get uh, the Lowe's buckets, which are really dark blue. Um, but if you do only have a white bucket or something that's really light, it's super important that you either use tape or paint on the outside of the bucket so that way light can't pass through. <clears throat> Any light that passes through is going to encourage algae growth and that would be a detriment to your systems. So you can purchase baskets like this online or at your local uh, hydroponics or gardening store. And the basket just has to be able to suspend itself in the top of the bucket. It has to be able to allow uh, obviously water and then air to pass through it so that way the plants get the nutrition they need. Um, but if it could also uh, mask off the top so that air doesn't get through uh, once you have the growth medium in there, uh, that is ideal. Um, the one that I got is black. Uh, that's probably what I would recommend going with. Also notice that inside the basket is something that we call a growth medium. Growth medium is just something that the plants can sit in that they can take root in. For me, I chose a lightweight clay rock that fills the basket but still allows the roots to find their way through it. No matter what you decide to use as your growth medium, whether it's uh, fish gravel or cocoa chips or rock wool, just make sure that it's rinsed pretty well. That way you're not introducing a bunch of foreign material into your system. Uh, hydroponics is pretty resilient, but you don't want it to be, <clears throat> you don't want to take any chances with what you introduce into it. And when you do rinse it, make sure you're using fresh water. Uh, especially the clay will have like a lot of dust on it. The other things that you'll need is a small air pump uh, I have a four bucket system, so I'm using a four uh, valve or four outlet pump. There are some calculations that people will, will give you as to determine how big of a pump you need, but realistically in a single uh, bucket system, you don't need anything too crazy. You just want to make sure that it um, takes the right type of tubing that you end up buying and that it, it's not too loud. So you can do some research. Some systems or some air pumps can be louder than others. Uh, you want to find one that's acceptable for you and you, you can just do that through a quick Google search and find out like which ones are loud and which ones are not. Really all you need is it to create enough bubbles to uh, allow air to permeate through your growth medium so that way your plants can get the air or the oxygen that they need and then also it kind of allows like the mixture of all of your uh, nutrients inside the system. A lot of it is kind of just uh, testing it out and seeing what works for you. There are some things that have to be a certain way. A lot of it is kind of flexible as to like, if you use uh, one brand of air pump as to another, I mean, it, it probably won't make too big of a difference. Obviously you don't want to get a massive air pump for a tiny system and you don't want to get the absolute smallest air pump uh, for a big system and so on. But uh, you know, just a little bit of research will help you out there. So outside of those items, the only thing that you're going to need uh, are some seeds. So you can, get like a kit with everything in it, or you could go to Lowe's and just buy like a 89 cent pack of romaine lettuce. Romaine is pretty robust. Uh, it, it grows pretty easily in hydroponics. And uh, other than that, um, to attach to your pump, you're gonna need some plastic tubing. Um, the plastic tubing should be garden friendly, which inlet, and then you'll need an air stone. I'll show you what those look like right here. So this is an air stone, and then this is the tubing that goes right in the middle of the bucket. 
and it sits right in the center and then it creates bubbles so that the uh, plants can get the nutrients that they need. Now, if you don't have the time or you don't have the interest in trying to find out um, you know, exactly what's perfect, they do sell kits that come with the air pump, the air stone, and the tubing, and that just knocks everything you need out. Um, and they're fairly inexpensive. Do you wanna take it to the next level? There are some other things you can do. Uh, you, you can allow your hydroponic system to use light from the sun, but I prefer to do mine indoors. I use light from a grow light, and basically what this is is a um, optimized pattern of LEDs that provide a spectrum of light that plants like without uh, exposing them to too much heat it also, if you keep it outside, you're gonna expose it to you know, insects and contamination and other things that um, could potentially compromise your, your plants. But uh, these, again, also are pretty cheap, but you know, extra, you don't need to get these. But uh, if you do, uh, I would recommend getting a timer. And what this does is it allows me to turn my lights on uh, in the middle of the night when energy costs are the lowest. Uh, before I get uh, too far ahead, there are some things that you will need. And that is going to be your pH adjustment kit. So that's gonna be this thing right here. And all this is, is a little vial, some pH tester, and then some adjustment. That's pretty simple to use, but you wanna make sure that your pH level uh, is within the band that you want it at, which I believe is about 6.3. So once you fill up your bucket, you'll wanna test the pH and then you just uh, use these to adjust it. It's pretty simple. I, I thought the same thing when I started. It's like, how do you know? Well, I just added a little bit and I tested it again and then I kind of got an idea of like how much you need. And it's really dependent on uh, what your pH starts at, which is gonna be unique to your water source. The other thing you'll need is some nutrition for your plants. So two of these you'll start with. Once your plants actually start to uh, grow, you're gonna need to feed them. And that's what this is. Very easy to do. I believe it's like a quarter of a teaspoon per gallon to start. It's very basic. And then uh, you go from there and eventually your plants will start to grow. So these guys, this is a tomato plant. There are also tomato plants. This is romaine. Right now they're, uh, they're looking a little floppy because they're getting a little too big for their their confinement. Um, also, you might notice too that I have this blue tube here. This is completely extra. Uh, all this is is a rubber grommet on the bottom uh, with a tube, and that way I can see what my water levels are at. You wanna make sure that your water levels stay high enough to where your plants can still get the, the water and nutrition they need. And uh, in Arizona, <clears throat> the water does evaporate quite quickly. So you wanna make sure you keep an eye on that. But you can do that without anything as fancy as this. Okay, so the first step is we're gonna show you how we incorporate the, the actual bucket and water and pumping system um, into our food computer setup. And so this is a standard hy hydroponic setup. So as you can see, we have a five gallon bucket here. Um, it's dark and it's important that you have a dark bucket because you don't want um, the roots exposed to light. Uh, roots are used to being in soil, they're used to being in dark, moist places. And so that's why you wanna make sure that um, you keep them dark. And so this is the air stone that's connected to the oxygen pump which is located at the top of the computer. And so this pumps oxygen throughout the water. And as you can see, it's creating bubbles. So it keeps uh, the water nice and oxy oxygenated and also uh, moves around nutrients. And so each of these uh, buckets has one of these air stones and oxygen pumps. And here is where the buckets are gonna, uh, is where the baskets and seeds are gonna go. And so these are the baskets we use with rock wool. We top them with rocks and then the, the plants will sprout right through there. And that also helps keep out light um, and then keep kind of moisture in the rock wool so it doesn't air out. All right, so outside of the bucket, water, um, and oxygen pump, um, I'm gonna walk you through some of the other materials that we use for these hydroponic systems. So as I showed you the um, rock wool, it usually gets sold in kind of bulk packages. We bought this on Amazon. Um, with rock wool, you'll wanna be careful. Um, it is kind of like the insulation that's inside of your walls. So if you touch it without gloves, you, there's a chance that you might get itchy and uh, turn red. So it's always important to wear gloves when handling 
Rockwell, and also uh, make sure to wash your hands. But there are also better, safer alternatives out there like CocoCore, which is organic and it won't uh, cause any harm. Um, but these are always a cost-effective option. Seedlings, we just buy regular, regular aquarium rocks, um, also from Amazon. Um, and like I mentioned, these help retain moisture and another layer to keep out the light. Our pH um, test kit that we use, also from Amazon, um, has um, the pH testing and then a pH up and down so you can uh, create more acidic or more alkaline conditions. And it has a, a little color strip on the back to um, help indicate which color correlates to which pH. And so that's a helpful tool in, in manually monitoring your pH. Um, instead of rocks on top, this is a this is a material known as vermiculite, and it's uh, kind of like a spongy. Uh, it, it looks like rocks, but it's more like a spongy material. And this is another option to top your uh, seedlings with uh, to keep to keep in that moisture. And then nutrients, there's a variety of nutrients that you can use. Um, these ones are the ones we use at, at, at the school. Um, you can see it's like a powder that they scoop into um, and there's directions on the back with how much to scoop for water. Um, I personally use um, the same ones I use for the tower garden just to keep things simple. So I, I um, order these from tower garden and that's where I get those. Um, but there's a variety of options to use and, and as long as it hydroponic system then we'll be good. Okay, and so now we're just gonna show you how to plant a seed in one of these uh, in the rock bowl. So you take your seeds and you usually, for small seeds, such as basil, I do like five to six, around five, or whatever comes out. Um, not all seeds will sprout, so you wanna do more than one to increase the likelihood of a, um, a seedling, um, but not too many because then you'll have to thin them out eventually. So you'll put the, the seeds in this little hole already inside of the rock bowl and you'll just kind of drop them in there. And then I use vermiculite here to kind of just cover the seeds with a moist um, or a, like a spongy medium, but it's not necessary. They'll, they'll sprout either way. Um, and then you, you top it with some rocks to help with the lighting. And then the seed will sprout right through there. And then you can go ahead and just place it right in your system and make sure that the water's high enough that it'll, that it'll absorb into the rock bowl. That's all I got for you for today. If you guys have any questions, please drop them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.